G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and welcome back to another How to Basic Beginner's Gardening Tips where I show you how to do the basics in food gardening in particular. And in this episode, we're gonna transplant a tomato plant that has self-seeded. It's come up by itself. It's a volunteer plant in that front bed. And we're gonna transplant it to a spot that I really want it to grow. And that's where our other tomatoes are growing here in this bed. The reason why I wanna transplant it is because we're refurbishing that bed and building it up and making a big row of raised garden beds, similar to some of my round raised garden beds there. First of all, I'll explain it. This is where I'll be digging the hole. I've already started and I thought, you know what? I should show you guys what I'm doing. So that's where the tomato plant will be going. And over here is where the tomato plant is growing. And I'm gonna dig it out and plant it over here. Let's get into it. Right, generally the first thing I'll do is I'll assess the plant and make sure that I've got a clear run at it. So I'll get rid of other things around it. I'll de-weed around the plant because I don't want to dig up a bunch of weeds as well as the tomato plant and just transfer them over to the new garden bed. So I'll get rid of all that and I'll, and I'll see exactly where this tomato plant stem is. And here it is here. Now I look at the size of this plant and I think, how big are its roots gonna be? You can get a bit of an idea by looking at the size of the plant and how big the branches are. And you can think, well, the drip line of the, the plant is similar to a tree. It's probably gonna be out about as far as the leaves go to the other extremities, several inches out from the base. Now, the aim is to get the majority of the root ball up and also not to sever the taproot of the plant at all. It'll still probably survive okay if you do, and if you do ruin or pull up the plant, but it'll, it'll make it harder for it to establish in its new spot and grow. So the idea is to get as much of that root ball as possible and then keep it together without it falling apart and disturbing those roots so that you can slot it into the new place. And that's why I dig the hole in the new place first so that there's no delay and I don't have to put the plant back down and disturb it even further. And then the soil fall apart from the root system. That's what we'll do now. Let's go back over there and dig that hole first. All right, I wanna put it about a meter away from this current tomato plant. And this one here is a self-seeder too. Although it hasn't started fruiting yet, it looks like it's gonna be a tigerella tomato, which is one of my favorites because we grew tigerellas here a few seasons ago. And I'd say this is a seed from one of the fruits that has fallen off and it's starting to grow. And this will be a great specimen. It looks very healthy. So I'll dig the hole in this corner. I've already enriched this bed with some good compost, some blood and bone fertilizer, so I won't need to add any fertilizer when I transplant the plant in. I want to dig a fairly deep hole. It doesn't matter with tomato plants if you end up burying a good portion of the stem. In fact, it does it really good to bury the tomato plant quite deep, even deeper than where it is now. It works well with tomato plants because then along that stem that's been buried, they can then shoot out more roots and the plant will grow stronger. So a nice deep hole, probably about half a foot in this case, but you can always check when you bring the plant over. So that's that prepared. Now, let's go and dig up that tomato plant. Okay, so I want it about seven or eight inches away, and I'm gonna dig it straight down, making sure that I try to get as much of the root ball as possible. And then we're gonna lift it up in one whole piece. Actually, before I do that, I might just in preparation to save me from doing this once I put it in, remove some of these lower branches because they'll be buried in the process and that's not a good idea. It could cause rotten disease to bury these stems. So I might as well remove them and that way even roots might start growing out of there. So I'll remove them first and trim them away. Remove them at the stem, 
cut them away. That one was broken there anyway. There we go, trim that extra off. There's a good stem there that's showing. All right, take a good bite of soil, dig right down, lift it up nice and gently. And then lift that up. Now you can see I'm supporting the stem of the plant so that it doesn't fall out and the root ball and I'm holding the shovel like this. I will quickly position the plant and just nice and easily lower it down, slowly remove the shovel, keeping it intact. There we go. Now I can just push it down, make sure it's seated properly in the hole. Hold that stem up, got that nice free area there, and it's about probably four inches below the top of the bed here, which is what I want, because I want to backfill and bury some of that stem. And that's what I'll do now, backfill with the soil. And now most tomato plants, if not all, even if they're a determinate style tomato plant, i.e. ones that don't grow very high and grow like a bush, or indeterminate that actually keep growing like a vine, it's still good to stake them. So you can either stake them any way you want, but I like using these towers here. I think they're a really good way to do tomato plants. So I'll put one of them over it now, position it centrally. Now these things here, plastic coated steel things, they're quite inexpensive, but they're really easy and good to use. And so it's just a matter of positioning it centrally over the stem, making sure that, that tomato plant comes up the center and I don't break any more of the leaves and then pushing it down nice and deep so that it's gonna be sturdy. And at the same time, bringing the tomato leaves up through and stems up through so I don't break anything. Pushing it nice and well in. Keep bringing the tomato plant up through over those levels. That's gonna stay in place beautifully and allow that tomato plant to climb right up to the top through that central leader, that central stem. And you're gonna get other leaders come off it and they can be tied up as well as it grows. I could probably either get some twine and tie it to the top, which is probably a good idea. I might just do that now as well and show you how I do that. So I've got my twine and I'll just tie that up the top of the leader of the stem, probably about eight inches down, and then I can wrap it around. I want to tie in a, just a reef knot so that that knot won't slip and slide. That there, then I'll just wrap it around the plant. You can see how I'm pulling it up just slightly and I'll tie it to the top of the tomato tower like this. And now that can easily be trained up. I'll just leave that extra length on there. Before I give it a mulch, I wanna give it a good deep watering so that the rest of that soil that's been pushed in behind the root ball, the roots can then settle because you're gonna disturb roots and you're disturbing the position of the plant as well. So it really will stress, even though you've tried to be as careful as possible and got most of the root ball with it, it's still good to give it a nice watering in. If you wanted to be extra careful and give it an extra boost, you could water it in with a little bit of soluble fertilizer just a very light soluble fertilizer maybe half strength or the best probably way to do it would be to use a bit of seaweed tonic and water it in with that and that'll help it reduce the shock of the tomato plant being transplanted there you go give them a nice deep water in now, as I was watering this in, I noticed that there are a few side shoots here that, to be quite frank, if I leave them grow, they're just going to hit the soil like this one and probably suck up disease and things like that. So I'm gonna remove some of these 
And just giving a little bit of a prune like this doesn't hurt either. Don't go overboard, but it can actually help it not suck up or not need so much water if you give it a bit of a prune when you transplant it, because then you're not losing as much water through the leaves and it's not needing as much energy to initially get re-established again. And the last thing I'll do is top it up with some mulch just to protect the roots and to just stop and inhibit other weeds and plants trying to grow up with it. It also retains water and helps the plant out overall. I generally use either our own wood chip or a standard organic sugarcane mulch. It's really good for this. Nice and deep, a couple of inches deep. Now I'll water this regularly to make sure that it doesn't dry out and it doesn't get stressed after it's just been transplanted. So probably every day for the first week I'll give it a bit of water. And there you have it. That's how I transplant a self-seeding tomato plant from one location where it started growing to the new location where I really want it to grow. I hope you enjoyed that beginner's tomatoes gardening tip hack. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Bye for now.